What do I have to do to be the best? Power, velocity, she threw 70 miles an hour at 16 and under. And then you throw out the Babe Ruth stats. And when you saw that on TV, the only person, guy or girl, you know, collegiate or professionally to go 70, 70, 70 wins, 70 home runs. You always hear things that pitchers can't hit or they're not good hitters. But then you have a perfect example of a pitcher who's really good at both. Winning the national championship my junior year with Hannah, I had already accomplished every goal that I could have ever imagined. The moment when I realized that I had a shot to give us the chance to win another national championship. I had a conversation with Coach Walton and I was like, I want this. I'm feeling good. We have to go hit soon, so I'm feeling a little tired, you know? Last night was late. Ugh. My hair's looking real good. Everyone, this is the real Lauren Hager. It says back-to-back -back for the national championship. Um, we all got it, but we all got it at different places. It's, I like just like coffee, not like all that other stuff in it, like Starbucks, it's all fancy. We are drive through in it up. Dunkin' Donuts, shout out. I should tweet at them. Hi. Thank you. This is my day. Wow, it's your day, Renata. What's it like being able to say I play professional softball? Was that like really weird to you coming from Florida? Yeah, it's super weird because it's like been such like a short turnaround. Like I was like a collegiate athlete and now I'm not. Like it, I literally had like three days off, I think, <laughs> of not being a collegiate athlete. So. It's strange. I think it'll hit me more when I go back to Florida and I'm not on the softball team anymore. It'll be weird. I was always athletic, always kind of like, just naturally like okay with the game, but I definitely was a late bloomer. I was really short and I had really big feet. <laughs> and I just remember um, that was it. I, I didn't. I grew about eight inches from seventh grade to freshman year of high school. And so freshman year is when I changed a lot and a lot of people like they didn't even recognize me because I just looked completely different. But I think physically with like the game, that's when it changed for me. I went to um, nationals my freshman year um, in the summer and then in the fall of my sophomore year is when I played in California every single weekend. And that's where Coach Rocha saw me first. Lauren was, you know, recruited by some good schools, and everybody should have been recruiting her, a pitcher like her. I recruited Lauren, saw her pitch um, in Kentucky at 16 under nationals, watched her pitch, um, and I was wow. And then I see her bat three, and wow. And she won her high school state championship, pitched the game, hit the game winning home run. She was always that dual, you know, pitcher, hitter, uh, utility player. Late fall, Christmas break is when I started going on unofficial visits. So really, really fast. Within a couple months, I was already like on college campuses looking at everything. And um, I just remember in February of sophomore year, I committed to Florida. I didn't want to just be a pitcher. I wanted to be involved more. I wanted to contribute all the time. And I love hitting, so. But, I, but they're different. They're like different adrenaline rushes, if that makes sense. I don't know, so it's hard to say which one's my favorite, but I like them both a lot. When you get older, 
practice and stuff doesn't become as like physically demanding as it does mentally. Just because you train physically and you're fine. And you've been playing softball forever and mechanics are mechanics and you, they're easy when you get to this level. But mentally, it's like super exhausting. That's where the difference is. That's what I felt the, the most difference when it became to like practicing games in college and now pro is mentally it's a lot more demanding than physically. The first time I took a visit here, my unofficial was the first time I'd ever stepped foot in the state of Florida. And so when I got here, you know, I really liked Coach Walton and what he had to say. Um, he's a very honest guy. He's not going to tell you just what you like to hear. He's going to tell you what's right and what's wrong. Um, but I really, I really wanted to go somewhere where I knew that I could be the best that I could be. I wanted to see how good I could be. My freshman year, I really think Coach Walton was expecting me to be that ace or to come in here and be another number one pitcher for him and I didn't have it. Trying to play first base, hit and pitch was very tough on Lauren Hager um, and we saw that and she was just good at all of them. She wasn't great at any of them. Her offense was probably her biggest tool. Um, she was God, had some God gifts and she's a very special individual and she's one of the reasons why I was uh, able to recruit Aubrey Monroe and Katie Medina in a sense because just her ability to hit and I knew that with Lauren's ability if, if at the time Aubrey was one of the most special catchers I'd seen her hands were unbelievable but she didn't swing the bat very well and she was probably and I don't know how much she's probably 105 pounds maybe she was six foot tall and 105 pounds she's skinny it was going to be hard to get a lot of um, you know a lot of things and I felt like I had some things that I could I could use Aubrey's strengths because of because of Lauren's strengths and um, didn't pay off as early as I, I thought Lauren wasn't our number one pitcher didn't pitch her and hit as much so it really kind of put us at a little bit of a disadvantage at times. Lauren's a very strong personality and if you don't know how to approach it all the time it can be hard so my freshman year with Lauren was I was trying to figure her out. I was trying to figure out how, because my job as a catcher is to help my pitchers. That's bottom line, that's my job. You know, help them either get more strikes, help them if they're struggling, help them get refocused, whatever it is. And Lauren wasn't used to that. So the first year was us really trying to figure each other out. And then after that, it was smooth sailing, we were on it. <laughs> I pitched a lot, I failed a lot, but I think for, in the softball aspect, I'd always been a thrower. I could throw so hard, but I didn't know how to pitch. My junior year, I accepted my role, I'm a closer, and that's what we did to win ball games, but I think it was, it just wasn't my time. It wasn't my time yet to, Hannah was hot, you roll with Hannah, like, that's just how it is in sports. You can't be selfish in that way. You just won a national championship with Hannah, like, why? So. For me, I was definitely accepting my role as a second, a second pitcher. I had my Saturday starts. Hannah had Friday, I had Saturday, Hannah had Sunday, and that's just kind of how it went for those three years. Something that I could bring that like different to the table is like this being athletic and being girly at the same time, and that's okay. Especially with a sport like softball, I feel like people like some people like judge me and like my teammates on Florida for you know why do you feel the need to like get dressed up and I'm like because you can still be girly and play softball there's absolutely nothing wrong with that just be yourself and if that's yourself then do it I don't know that's just my opinion on that but I like it and I like to so I do gotta layer the waterproof on because I'd be sweating I'm sweating out there Hot. We're in Texas now. Do more eyebrows. I have to put it on them in layers if I don't want to sweat them off. That's the trick, ladies. That's the trick. Layers. All right, the final step of brows. I know everyone's wondering. Eyebrow gel. Yeah, you know. 
Now we're ready. Now I can pitch. That's all I needed. Who needs anything else, you know? Her. Yay. Good. Goody. Okay. I didn't understand pitching the way that a pitcher should until my senior year of college. So Coach Walton had brought me into his office a bunch of times saying, you do what I, I've asked you to do. I just feel like there's so much more, but that's not something I can make you do. Job, that baby. I don't, I don't, I stay out of their way. I let them be. Um, only time I ever get involved in, in really what they do is if they need me to because they're either, they're deficient in, in something. You know, whether it's socially, academically, or athletically, that's when I get more involved with athletes. But other than that, I really, ultimately, I'm just a facilitator to try to help them reach their goals. I definitely think what makes Coach Walton such a great coach is he does physically and in the game part, he pays attention to so much detail. He does use his experience, which is really awesome in baseball, and he's like, I know we play softball, it's different, but there are some similarities, and why not think about it that way? And He's gonna call you out if you do something wrong because like, there's no other way to do it. Honesty, he's gonna be honest with you, he's gonna be real with you. If you don't like it, you don't like it, but at least he's honest. I put in so much time in the bullpen and I put in so much time at that field and I worked harder than I have ever worked in my entire life and definitely when season started, at the beginning of SEC play, I said, we got to Alabama the first Friday night. I wasn't supposed to pitch that game, but since there was a rain something, he was like, all right, you're pitching this game. And I pitched an amazing game, and I said, I can do this. Lauren Hanger, great job. Yeah. I need for your hitting. Good job pitching, too. Yeah. Yeah. Lauren Hanger. Good job. Aubrey Monroe. Hey, just remember, like I said before, we win. We win with class and lose with class. Nothing but good things. Don't worry about it. Take care of our Gators. Don't worry about anybody else. Take care of the Gators. We had set a goal to win a national championship that year. And so we worked so hard. I've never, I've never worked as hard as I did. She just really became more coachable. She, be, she coached herself better. She just seemed like she was embracing being a senior as opposed to being abrasive and not taking it all in. And she just, she really, she did a good, I mean, again, obviously the culture creates that. If you can have seniors to be able to step up in the moment that aren't afraid of the lights and afraid of graduating and afraid of the, the next step. I felt like Lauren, just, she, she just did that for us. She embraced it. She embraced being a leader. She embraced being um, the, having the bullseye on her. If she did well, we did well. If she did poorly, we did poorly. My sophomore year, we were not supposed to be anywhere near the Women's College World Series. Coach Walton was like, if I can get a group of girls to go from that to make it to the Women's College World Series, they've all been here for a year. I have the highest expectations for the next year. I think after the second game was a wake-up call. It was kind of like, it's not going to be handed to us. You know, Coach Walton, he wasn't like, it's okay, you know. He was upset. We wanted to win a national championship. We knew we had, we had the tools at every position. We knew we had the speed, the athleticism, the power, the pitching. We were like, we want to win it again. You could see it in our eyes that we were different that day. We came out different, and we were who we are as the Florida Gators football team, and that's how we won that game. Typically as a coach, you go through one experience like that in your career. You got one player that all of a sudden gets to a, an unconscious moment and just gets in the zone and doesn't want to see their career end, and that's Hannah. But then Lauren duplicates that 
as a coach, you sit here almost as a, 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 a parenting figure. You're very proud, I'm very proud of Lauren. Um, last year was Lauren's brightest moment. Me and Coach Walton, we had previously had a conversation and I was like, you know, I want the chance. I, I want to be number one. And he gave me that chance and I think that's when it flipped for me is when I fell in love with softball again like I did when I was 10.